So, been speaking with Weihan, your Risk Five Chief Architect. Yes. Why do you have what? What? It's a two-part question, really. Why have you got cores in your AI chip at all, mm -hmm. and why are they Risk Five cores? Yeah, there's a couple. So, why Risk Five processors at all? So, first, our Tensic processor has five little Risk Five cores in them. We call them the baby Risk. Right, and they do stuff like fetch data, execute math operands, push data around, manage to knock, do some other things. Um, and they're risk five partly because we could write it and do what we want. We don't have to ask anybody for permission. We could change the baby risk, actually leave some stuff out. It's pretty simplified. Um, we, in a future generation, we're, we enhance the math capabilities and fix a whole bunch of stuff so we can talk to the local hardware control pretty directly. So it's ours, we can do anything we want. We put in RISC-V in our next generation chip, which we're taping out soon, part because we went and asked the other vendors to add some floating point formats for us, AI. So we're keen on AI floating point formats, accuracy, precision stuff, and AI programs have to be because you want to drive the small floating point data sizes but maintain the accuracy across you know, billions of operations. And the RISC-V guy said, sure. So we called sci five and said, can you do this in the future? So we did. Um, so that's why RISC-V is in there now. In the future, we think AI and CPU integration is going to be interesting. And we want to be able to do what we want. And I don't want to have to ask somebody for permission to ask, add a data type or add a port from a processor to this or change how the, the data movement engine works. I, I just want to be able to do it. You're also moving into chiplets. And yes. Machine learning chiplets, CPU type chiplets. You know. Yeah, there's, two, there's, there's a couple of drivers. One is three nanometers is really expensive to take yep. out. So everybody knows that. Yep. The other is you, you want to drive forward on the compute in terms of density and power efficiency, but all that I.O. part doesn't care that much. A big driver is the packaging technology has moved to the point where you can get fine pitch, good low power die to die files and do what you want. Now, the dream is then you have an AI chiplet, CPU chiplet, NPU chiplet, a couple kinds of memory controllers, a couple kinds of PCI Express controllers, and then you can build a product out of a, an assemblage of different chips. And you could say, well, that's kind of like a board, but now it's in a package. And it's, and it's in a package where the chip's a butt with really short wires, so the power efficiency of chip to chip at high bandwidth is really good. Um, we, we suspect the next couple of years is going to be growing pain problems. Um, we've talked to quite a few people about it, and what I think is going to happen is if you have a solution you really want and you're building this chip and somebody else is building another chip and you work together and co-simulate, the odds are good that it'll work together. And then the cool thing then is, is you can build more products with less tape-outs. And I also think it's going to lower the bar for some kinds of products, lower the cost bar. And yeah, so I, I think it's a really good idea. Um, a couple of things are driving it. The, you know, the need for it, the cost, the package availability, the willingness of people to cooperate across these domains. You know, it's going to, but, but like anything, this is not going to be easy. This is going to be <laughs> a complete bloody mess. And I predict a year from now, I'll be thinking, geez, why did we get into this? We should have waited for somebody else to take the arrows.